what is the limit as x goes off to 0 of 1 over sine of x minus 1 over x? If we just think about what's happening, as, as x is becoming arbitrarily close to 0, the sine of x is getting closer and closer to 0 as well. So 1 over sine of x is going to blow up. If, if we're coming to 0 from the right-hand side, then, then we're going to be blowing up to infinity minus infinity. We'll be headed to infinity minus infinity. If we're coming from the left-hand side, it's similar. It'll, it'll be negative infinity plus infinity. But either way, we, we get something of this form, infinity minus infinity. Now, if it had just so happened that we instead got something of the form infinity plus infinity, you would know what that means. If one term is getting arbitrarily large and the other term is getting arbitrarily large, then when you add them together, it's still growing arbitrarily large. That would just be going to infinity. But what should we have now that is infinity minus infinity? It's not at all clear. You know, is this infinity a little bit bigger? If so, then you may subtract infinity. There should be something left over, right? If, if this infinity is smaller, then maybe it becomes negative. If they're the same size, maybe it's zero. It's not at all obvious what this should be. This is called an indeterminate form. We're going to need to use L'Hopital's rule to help us here. But remember, L'Hopital's rule only tells us what to do if you have something of the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity. If, if your f over g is approaching 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then the limit of f over g will be just the limit of the derivative of f over the derivative of g. But this is neither of those forms. This is not 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. It's infinity minus infinity. So the name of the game for us is going to be to figure out some way to change infinity minus infinity to make it look like either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. How can we do that? Well, let's begin by noticing these are both fractions. And so we can combine them into a single fraction. This is just going to be x over x times sine of x minus sine of x over x times sine of x. And now we have a single fraction. If we think about what this single fraction comes out to be, as x goes to 0, you say, well, this x would be going to 0. The sine of x is going to 0, so the top is going to 0. And on the bottom, x is going to 0, sine of x is going to 0, the bottom is going to 0. So now we've m managed to, to manipulate algebraically to move from something of the form infinity minus infinity to something of the form 0 over 0. What this accomplishes is now we're free to use L'Hopital's rule. Since it's of the right form, since it's a fraction that's 0 over 0, we can now apply L'Hopital's rule to figure out what this is. This will just be the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative of the top, 1 minus cosine of x all over the derivative of the bottom. Notice it's a product, so we need to use product rule. Hold the x times it by the derivative of sine, which is cosine, plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times sine of x. OK, now we have a new expression, and we can calculate this limit instead. What would be the limit as x goes to 0? Well, as x goes to 0, cosine is approaching 1. So you get 1 minus 1, or 0 on top. And on bottom, here you get a 0 plus a 0. So again, it's 0 over 0. This is still of the form 0 over 0, which means we need to use L'Hopital's rule again. So a second time, we apply L'Hopital's rule to it. Now we have the limit as x goes to 0 of, on top, minus cosine becomes positive sine of x, the derivative 
of cosine is minus sine, so the derivative of minus cosine is positive sine. On bottom, the derivative of x cosine of x, using the product rule, it's x times the derivative of cosine, so minus x sine of x, plus the derivative of x is 1, so that gives you cosine of x, plus the derivative of sine gives you another cosine of x, so it's plus 2 cosine of x. What is the limit now? Taking the limit as x goes to 0, the limit of your sine is 0, but the limit on bottom is now 0 plus 2 times cosine at 0, which is 2, or 0 over 2, which is 0. So we're able to find this limit by first changing it to be of one of the forms described by L'Hopital's rule, and then repeatedly applying the rule until we got it down to a nice definite form, simply the answer 0. In general, whenever you have some indeterminate form, like infinity minus infinity, you need to figure out some way to get it back to one of these two forms that we well understand, and then you can apply L'Hopital's rule. We'll see some more examples of this in the upcoming videos.